Hi everybody, I'm Ewan. Hope you're feeling good today because on this session I'm going to talk about the GROW model, which is a process model which is used in coaching. Now, before I get into the detail of what the GROW model uh, is about, I just want to talk about two concepts, content and process. So content is what? So when you're doing coaching with somebody else, their, their life history, their story, their problem, their situation, that is all what? That's content. Now, what process is about is process is how. So as the coach, you're in charge of the process, the process of the coaching, the process of development, the process of achievement. So you're in charge of the how, and the client is in charge of the what, the content. Now, if you, as the coach, start getting involved in the client's content, then you're kind of not coaching them anymore. Maybe you could be mentoring them. So if you know a little bit about the uh, the content that uh, uh, that they're involved in, uh, maybe in a work situation or something like that, then maybe you can mentor them because mentor is about giving somebody some advice based on your experience. Because if you've walked the kind of path, it's never going to be exactly the same, but if you've walked the kind of path that somebody else is walking, you're empowered as a mentor to give them advice based on your experience. Now, there's quite a lot of crossover between the idea of coaching and mentoring. A lot of the, the tools can be the same. The biggest difference though, is as a mentor, you're actually getting involved in giving advice about somebody's content. Now, that's what you don't do as a coach. So as a coach, you're not getting involved in somebody's content. You're not telling them what specifically to do. That's that's their job. You, your job is to help bring that out of them, but uh, that's, uh, that's what the client's uh, responsible for. Now, one of the good things about coaching is if you're in charge of the process, you can coach somebody about anything because you don't actually have to be an expert in what their content is. The client is an expert in their content. If they've got gaps missing in their, in their knowledge, then you can task the client to go away and fill those, those gaps in. Uh, but you don't need to be an expert in the content that you're actually coaching somebody else about. Now, as it happens, what, what often coaches do is they often specialize in something they have an interest in or they do have some experience in. And that just makes it maybe more interesting for them uh, to, to do that. Nevertheless, as the coach, you still don't get involved in what the client's content is. That's, that's up to the client. What you'll find as a coach is there are not that many things which you could honestly say you're an expert in. Now, if you happen from prior experience or something like that to be an expert in something, you could actually get involved in the content, but you have to be really honest with yourself about what you're an expert in. I am actually, this is what I did before, I, I still am, I am actually a chartered accountant, uh, but I don't consider myself to be an expert in the field of accountancy because I haven't done accountancy for 17 years. So there are certain aspects of it that I might know a little bit about, but it's very unlikely that I'm gonna get a client coming to see me who's got a problem with producing consolidated accounts for a multinational company, which is something I used to do in the past. And as I said, it was about 17 years ago, so I think it might, might be a challenge for me now to produce consolidated accounts for a multinational uh, company. So. You don't have to be the expert and you have to be honest with yourself about what you really are an expert in. So you don't sort of overstep boundaries and start getting involved in somebody else's content. So two important concepts at the beginning, content and process. Now what the GROW model is, the GROW model is a process model. Now one of the things, a process model for the coach to use. One of the things as a coach, I always say to people when I run trainings is, process supports you. So as a coach, if you fall back on process, it doesn't matter what the client brings into the session, you fall back on process and the process supports you to drive out uh, the, you know, what the client's looking for, the solution, the answer, the task, whatever it, whatever it happens to be. Um, so process supports you, fall back on process. The GROW model is a process model. Now, where the GROW model comes from is it was originally created by a chap called Sir John Whitmore. 
Now, Sir John Whitmore has been quite influential in the development of, of coaching. Um, he published a book in 1992, Coaching for Performance, and uh, the GROW model is something that he developed. Now, he developed it, he, his, some of his history was he was um, a racing car driver um, prior to moving into personal development coaching. So he, was, he had knowledge and experience of high performance sort of situations. Um, and then what he did, he did some training that, uh, with a bunch of people called the Human Potential Movement in California in the 1960s. Um, after doing some work with them, um, he then also worked with a Harvard tennis coach called Timothy Galway. Now, Galway wrote a very influential book about coaching, which was called The Inner Game, The Inner Game of Tennis. Uh, went on to talk about the inner game of skiing and golf and that sort of thing uh, as well. So, so Whitmore worked with him as well. And then what he, what he did was he brought some of the ideas of coaching out of that sort of sports arena into a business arena. And he worked with McKinsey's, the consultancy firm McKinsey's. Now, what McKinsey's wanted is they wanted a simple mnemonic to kind of describe what they were doing. So what Whitmore did is he actually got some NLP people, I don't know who they were, but he got some NLP people involved and they modeled what Whitmore was doing and the output from that was first of all something called the S7 model and then it was eventually simplified to, uh, to the GROW model. So GROW stands for goal, reality, options and will. Now it's often called the two GROW model because you want a topic at the beginning, something that you're going to work on, but let's just focus on the, uh, the, the GROW, the goal, reality, uh, options and will. We'll just go through each of those in turn. Um, so first of all, the what you do with the clients is explore what they want to achieve. Or you could say what they think they want to achieve at the beginning. That's the goal. So you, you'll ask questions, open questions to bring that out. You know, what do you want? What what do you want to achieve? Um, you know, what would make you the happiest or something, something like that. So you're going to ask questions to explore what it is the client actually thinks right now that they want to achieve. Now the reality then is you want to check the situation. What's the current situation uh, that they're in? The, the, that's what the reality is. You know, where where are they now relative to where they want to, to get to? Um, now, one of the things that's really important and often overlooked with the GROW model is you need to be flexible with it. So just because I'm now, well, I've explored the goal a little bit, now I'm going to talk about the reality. Just because you're now talking about the reality of the situation uh, with somebody doesn't mean you can't go back to the goal. What the client came in with to begin with, which they said that they want to achieve, often it is what they want to achieve, but it, there might be something else underneath. And you've got to be open-minded enough to realize actually there could be something underneath. And as you explore the reality, maybe this sense of the deeper thing that was underneath uh, comes out into the client's awareness or something like that. So you talk with them about um, you know, the, the goal that they, they want to achieve, and then you explore the reality, where are they now relative to the goal, but you're flexible enough to, to move uh, between two if you need to. And then when you've got clarity on those two things, then you can look at the options. Now the options are, what's the client gonna do about the situation? Uh, that they're in. Now remember, it's it's not up to you as the coach to come up with solutions. You're going to assist the client to explore within themselves so that they can find the, the solution. Um, and again, it can sound really simple when I just say it like this, but there's no small amount of skill in doing that. Uh, language skills, flexibility in your own thinking, the ability to look at things from lots of different perspectives. Um, so you use the flexibility that you've got to impute that flexibility on the client to help them open up uh, new opportunities. Maybe things they, they haven't thought about before. I kind of always work on the assumption that the client's got the problem, the client's got the solution because you kind of can't have the problem without the solution. Otherwise, how do you know it's a problem? So I work on the basis that their unconscious mind kind of does have some sort of solution in there and you're helping them explore options to find that. And then the last point that you're looking at is then the will is you could look at uh, the options about what could you do? And then the will is what will you do? So you're then checking how motivated are they to actually take this, this forward, to do the one of the options that they've maybe explored. So 
you want them to be motivated. If they're not quite motivated, there's something not quite uh, quite working uh, with it. You, they, they may be not connecting with something, you may be missed something. So you want to make sure that, that at, towards the end of the session, client may come in a bit down at the beginning, but at the end of the session, they're looking much more motivated about the path that they can now see. So in essence, very simply, little introduction, that's what the GROW model is about. So you explore the goal that they want to achieve, you look at the reality where they are now, you explore options with them, and then you check how motivated their will, uh, to use the W, <laughs> their will at the end. Uh, as I said, they're really important. You have to be flexible within it. The, the model is there just to give the coach a bit of structure and process because it's that process which supports the coach to help the client. Thanks for watching.